Hey guys, it's Baban and I'm back with another video and this is going to be one of them little narrated ones. Uh, these are some icons that I did as a commission, all for the same person during September 2021, so it's a little bit old now. But I know you guys like these kinds of little compilations and narrated speed draws, so I decided to go with this one. Uh, I've got four of these characters to do and I also have next to this one just up in the top corner another reference of one that I've done before of one of the same person's other characters so I wanted to keep it kind of in the same range as that one so that they will all kind of stay together in the same sort of theme or style without looking out of place next to each other. Also with this I was trying to do something that's I guess a little bit closer to how I do emote style things because that was what I was leaning to in that one that I've got just up at the top with the pink and the green. So I'm trying to make them bigger than that obviously so they're a little bit better, better and cleaner and easier to see than the kind of smaller emote style. Um, but I'm going to be doing the shading in the same kind of way where I do it mostly on one flat light and then just introduce like a little bit of gradient over the top. Uh, anyways. I'm just trying to keep the sketches kind of tidy. I managed to do a lot of them on the first go around for the sketch on this actually. I got this one kind of right the first time I did it and the other ones I had a little bit more of a fight with. This one was a bit easier to get compositionally as well because there's also the little kind of dragon spirity thing as well so I could curve that around to make different shapes. With these next two that are stood next to each other and the refs at the side as well we want both of them looking at each other so I was trying to get these so that they would work and have the eyes connecting. I think I was doing all on top of each other in terms of how I was layering these, um, but I had to go and kind of move them around and check them and see if they were gonna work together. They're kind of like, I guess, couple icons. I'm doing my thing as well of like habitually trying to get different angles so they're a bit more interesting than just like front on. I have like a real aversion to drawing stuff just like front on, <laughs> or at like a very, I don't know same level kind of angle I always do either like top down or down up kind of view on them so that you get kind of weird angles and a bit more wackiness in the face. I kind of like all the old classical paintings where you have all the people just kind of like flopping about like a fish drop on the deck and flop like a fish and they've just got their heads back looking kind of like you know absolutely fed up with everything. Their eyes are like kind of rolling like, oh geez, like that kind of, yeah, that kind of look I like. I guess I don't play it up quite as much as I could. I don't play it up to that extent because they're almost meme worthy, those kind of old paintings in that style. Uh, but I kind of lean into it. <laughs> I like drawing a little flippy hairs too. I like it when people have uh, l like anime hair flips, I suppose. I think they're interesting. That seems to be a like prominent character design thing that I see a lot. I don't know, I, I think it's fun to have extra flippy hairs anyway. Or uh, I think I've heard it described before with anime characters that it looks like they have at least two or three different hairstyles like together in the, in the same hairdo. <laughs> it's really weird. So they usually have like a lot going on at the front where they've got like a couple of different um, kind of bangs and things or fringes at the front. It's kind of weird. Uh, anyways, my dude here, I like drawing his hair because it looks very textury, so I tried to go and play that up with the shapes that are in it. Uh, he's also got a scar that goes across from, I think it's like the corner of his nose almost, and then it goes over the lip and down the side. And I had a little bit of a fight with it because I think I, I remember saying it when I was streaming it and having it pointed out and giggled at later that it looks like he's got like a snot dribble so I had to be like really careful with it <laughs> so it didn't like just like sloppy down his face <laughs> um but yeah he's got one of them I guess kind of bomber jackets with the fluff and the leather on it because I thought that would suit him I don't think that was a suggestion that I put on him I think I thought that would suit him and went for it that might be wrong but that's kind of what I remember uh and also this character. I think I calmed down on these two with the different angles because they kind of looked better. He looked better in comparison to the other lady that he's in a couple icon with by just being kind of a front on view. And she looked a little bit better here because it's going to read better that she's looking at the little stone she's holding. Um, she's got a whole bunch of eyeballs as well. She's got hairpins that have eyeballs on them and they were very fun to do. Uh, I tried to work in kind of natural 
eye colors on that one as well. You'll see it a little bit later, but I tried to get that to work with the colors I already had. Uh, here we go, tidying them up. Now with two of these, I thought they were okay, so I didn't actually go and clean the sketches up on this pass through. I just go and do it with this one and the lady with the um, little stone that she's looking at with the eyeballs and things. Uh, I was just trying to get the expression right. I think I fought with this one a little bit because I wanted something quite soft, but I tend to go quite crazy with the eyebrows and not like them too much. I think I actually like, tilted the head further back on this one so that she looks a little bit kind of softer and more affectionate. She she does have a little bit of an OU air about it, but it's, it's, uh, it's not too bad. I think the arms calm it down quite a lot. The way she's kind of just relaxed. Uh, she's got a bunch of beads too that are gonna be bright blue later, like in that wrap. Um, I tried to fluff her hair out a little bit more too, and I do something different with the way I shade her hair later because I decided to make it kind of squared off with where the lighting was as opposed to having it quite round because I thought that might make it a little bit more interesting because a lot of the shapes in her hair are quite round already. Um, I'm starting to lean a little bit more into that actually. Whenever I draw a different character I think about what shapes do I have in the hair, what shapes are in the rest of their design, what kind of shapes can I use in the hair shine. I, I didn't really used to think about that a whole lot but it's kind of becoming a thing that I, uh, I get a little bit obsessed with now. Um, the hands. I think I made a hand a little bit too creepily big at first on this one and I had to like tweak it some. It, it kind of looks like a big buff man hand there. <laughs> it doesn't look quite right. She does have very long hands though. Uh, and a bunch of tails. Once I got all these sketches cleaned up as well, I decided it was a little bit easier to maybe not have them directly on top of each other and bring them into a sheet, just because I had those two the where the, um, the eyes need to actually connect and it would be a little bit more fuss to actually be constantly pulling them apart and checking that they work as I'm drawing that in. Uh, they weren't actually that big either, so it wasn't really too much fuss to bring them just into the one sheet. Uh, just get them all to align as well, like this. So they all set out into a nice little square. And there we go, and then we're gonna go and start doing the lines. Uh, since I said these were kind of leaning into the same way that I do emotes also, what I'm gonna be doing is doing the usual kind of shading that I do, which is a little bit less, I wanna say objective and a bit more stylized, because I will go and chunk in big bits of shadow kind of under the chin just to block out the shape because where that is, I'm gonna kind of swap the color out later and then that will just keep where the shadow is, but obviously it can change the color to make it blend in a little bit more and not be quite as harsh with the full uh, solid black. On these as well, in terms of time scale, I think, I think I did the sketches the one day and then this section for me starting the lines to getting it finished was one stream, so think it didn't actually take me all that long to do these. Uh, I think I'm getting to the point where I'm used to doing quite a lot of these in the sense that I, I will sit and do quite a lot of emotes and you get used to the process eventually so it's quite easy to push through it and keep going as opposed to doing something big where you kind of get distracted and hop around a little bit. It's all the same kind of thing so it's not quite as easy to get distracted and go off and pick at the background or something else that's in little details hiding in a corner. <laughs> also anything else that's kind of easy for me to block out like the beads that I've already got there for a holding. Um, things like the eyes I've just blocked them out solid so that I can go and fill the colors in later. It makes it a little bit easier than actually going and lining something like that. Uh, so just go and put the little spots down since they're round, so they're going to be round from any angle that we see them. Uh, I could put lines on them if I wanted to. There is a way for me to do that from that chunk, but that's a, that's a whole nother video. Uh, and then going and lining my dude over here with his crinkly hair that I tried to give a little bit more texture to. Um, I try quite hard to not keep all the hair I draw very smooth. I think a lot of it is kind of like how she's got the smooth swooshy hair, but I try I try and put like like a little bit of kinky waviness into it sometimes like that. Uh, just to 
and give it some movement. I guess the same way I do like the fur that he's got there on his uh, on his jacket as well. He's got an eye patch too, but you can't see it under his hair. I don't think. No, you can just see his other eye. Uh, I think I had a little bit of a fight with this and got confused at the start too because I wasn't sure who wanted to be facing which way so that we could see his eyeball. That, that always confuses me with characters with uh, either like hair over their eye or eye patches. I, I get I get left and right confused. <laughs> it's terrible. Uh, big chunky eyebrows, a little bit of the chops. I like drawing different faces on people too. He's got he's got like a good chin on him. It was very fun to draw and a good nose too. He's got like a big old squarish looking nose. I'm starting to enjoy drawing dudes a lot more because you can, uh, I guess, give them like chunkier faces and it doesn't look odd and out of place. I do want to start bringing a little bit more variation into the way I draw ladies, uh, but I think usually a lot of the refs I have don't kind of lend themselves to that. I don't get a lot of buff ladies to draw. I do like drawing buff ladies, <laughs> um, but it would be fun to kind of muck about with more extreme shapes. Uh, her kind of swooshy hair too. I try to make her hair a little bit pointy, I think. Um, especially in the way that it wraps around in the buns. I think you'd call them buns. Yeah, they kind of like point in the corners, so she's a little bit sharper. Um, and I made her chin and nose a bit sharper too. She's, she's a bit more pointy so that it sets off uh, the roundness of the, of the eyeballs. She looks a little bit more harsh against them. She's also got the really cute little dot eyebrows. I forgot about those. Those are my favorite. I love little dot eyebrows. They remind me of like puppy dogs. <laughs> They're really cute. And then hands and things. I think I'm getting a little bit more used to drawing hands and stuff now. I'm starting to notice that I'm not having quite as much trouble with them in different poses like this that might have been a problem before. There's still some kind of nuance to them that I feel like I'm missing and not quite catching very well with things like foreshortening and certain poses and angles and the way that they kind of curve around or when the palm kind of curves around a little bit depending on how you hold something or move. That I am still fighting with but I'm slowly getting a bit more used to moving them in odd shapes like this where she's got like the eyeballs between the fingers and she's holding that in a certain way. Uh, even things like yeah, poking the cheek click on this one and stuff and getting a little bit more weight behind that. I think I'm starting to catch a little bit better. Um, looking back at these from, where am I recording this? January? January in 2022. So it's, how many months is that? September, October, November, December, like five, I guess five months ago. That's a little while ago. I, I don't have too many issues with these. There's a little bit of kind of perspective issue I have. Maybe where the ears are placed on some of them is a little bit out of place. Maybe some of the skulls aren't pulled back quite enough is an issue that I've noticed that I have that I've been trying to work on fixing. Um, what else? I, I think the lines are pretty okay. I think the lines turned out well on these. Uh, this purple one specifically, I like quite a lot. I think that's my favorite out of the set because the angle looks interesting, but I also like the composition and the colors on it. And I think it works well with what I had from the reference. Uh, I think I might've leaned a little bit more into my style for the other ones. So I kind of think this one looks a little bit too different from them because I like the reference a whole lot kind of went with the the big eyes <laughs> and they went quite well on it I kind of adjusted everything else around it like the face shape uh whereas with the obvious with the other ones it's very obviously Baban looking uh anyways going and filling these in and the bits in the back I go and put textures in the back of these later actually because I thought it looked a little bit more interesting than just um simple gradients that kind of pulled them out a little bit more but didn't look like too much because there really isn't that much background behind them. I don't think there's any at all on that purple one. I had a bit of a mess about with it to try and get it to take a background, but it just, it wouldn't because there really is not enough space for it. I decided to um, make the shade in a little bit heavier and have the, the background solid black so it would blend in with it. Uh, anyways, I went and added a little bit more weight onto those lines because some of them were not kind of holding it quite right once I got that base down. Um, and the kind of scruffiness of the sketch away from underneath it. Uh, so we're going in flats. 
which is just a whole thing, a couple more lines, <laughs> bits of gradient that I tested for the colours. Uh, what I'll usually do is kind of slap down an idea of colours, especially if I'm doing emotes and I have a whole set, I will slap colours down on one and try and like work it all the way through to a conclusion before I start messing about with other ones. Um, to make sure that it's gonna look right all the way through. I kinda had a little bit more leeway with these though because they're all their own separate thing. So I'm putting down a little bit of an idea of where I wanna go with them, a bit of a concept color thing. Uh, and then rolling with it and seeing what else I can do. So I've got all of those down. I'm gonna start going and putting in shadows, seeing what they do, blocking them down like that. Um, I think I was trying to lean into like soft blue and maybe a little bit coral with this one. Uh, that's a colour scheme that I'm starting to like quite a lot is I guess kind of powdery blue, red, coral looks quite nice because they kind of oppose each other but they're soft enough if you dull them down to not look really obnoxious. Oh, here I go with the shading too when I mentioned that I made the shapes in her hair a little bit different. I decided to go and make them quite choppy like this because I thought it would look a bit more interesting. Like, I kind of like the way it turned out actually, that's one of my favourite little things about this set that I did. Uh, just makes it look a little bit different than it would otherwise I think, giving it all uh, kind of square highlights like that. And another thing that I'm starting to like to do as a stylistic choice, um, Usually what I'll do with these kind of highlights, if they're not quite bright enough or I can push it a bit more, is go and do this kind of outline that you just saw me do there. But I'm starting to find that it looks nice to put gradients in like this so that that whole chunk still acts as a highlight, but you have kind of a gradient between it. So you have kind of the highest highlight and where most of the light is hitting and really making it pop out. And then it just kind of gradients out into something a little bit darker but where there's still a highlight and it kind of keeps the chunkiness of it being cell shaded but it also softens it out a little bit and gives it more of I guess a natural hair shine because they don't really condense quite that much and it helps to yeah just I guess not have it as sharp because I do like a little bit of gradient in my stuff I just try and be very careful about how much and where I put it in because the more I put in the closer it gets to me just wanting to paint it, <laughs> which is bad when you're trying to do something that's a little bit more simple like this and everything's gonna get lost when it's used as an icon. Or if we just want something that's like a bit more in this style anyway, that kind of uh, defeats the purpose if I wanna keep nibbling at it. Uh, going and changing some of the line colors too, soften them down. Uh, I change those line colors around the back too so that she stands out nice with anything that leaks outside of that um, outline. Something that does bother me a little bit on this one is, you can probably see it, there is quite a bad tangent with where that circle curves around at the top and where the top of her head is. It almost kind of merges into the same line. I think that's a little bit annoying. Uh, I probably should have brought it either a little bit higher or a little bit lower. I was just kind of concerned about keeping it in the circle and I think I was a bit like, a bit scared about it. Um, so that kind of bothers me. But other than that, I don't think this one's too bad. Just, uh, I need to be on tangent watch more. I really don't do it that badly anymore because I pay quite a lot of attention to it since I usually draw things that have lots of things in them. Kind of like Where's Wally looking stuff, I guess. <laughs> when I do big illustrations. So I try and be very careful, but... It does happen from time to time, especially when you have something that has to squeeze down into a circle like this. Uh, anyways, carrying on with the other ones, I'm trying to keep the hair nice and pastel-y, and I also go and apply the same gradient trick that I did on the last one for the hair shine in a second, whenever I get to that. Uh, but I think I got it to work the best on this one. I, I don't know why, but it, every stage kind of worked out better on this one than it did the others. <laughs> which is a little bit weird because I don't usually lean into like the pink and the purple or the pastels so I expected to struggle with that one a little bit more than I did but I like the way that it turned out. I like the little dragon too, the little dragony spirit thing is very fun. That's actually that character as a, as a spirit, it just kind of looks like a dragon so I keep calling it one. Um, but yeah, a whole bunch of eyeballs on it too, just eyeballs everywhere. <laughs> I think 
with these as well, the gradients that I did are in a glow layer, so that's just kicking up the colour that's underneath it. I think I might have leaned it into different colours depending on which one I was on or where I wanted it to lean. Uh, I was trying to get it to kind of keep consistent with the colours that were already there by reducing it quite a bit. Uh, we're going to get to that in a second anyway, there's a little bit more details to put on them before I do that, but what I'm going to do is just go in and fill those big areas where I already have, I guess, the highlight, <laughs> or where, just where the light is, where it's the lighter colour on the hair. Uh, fill in the background too, or I'll end it up black. Uh, I did try to like gradient in like this first, but it wouldn't do, so I just... Uh, Chunk it in, erase it out, keep it nice and soft. There we go. It just makes like a nice, a nice shiny edge. Makes it look a little bit more curved as well. I think that's what helps it. It doesn't look quite as chunky as when you just have a solid line for that kind of thing. Uh, and then going and doing the jumper, I decided not to put lines on it so that it was a little bit softer just with the colours that are on there. Uh, it does kind of blend in where the shadows are, but I wasn't too upset about that. I thought it kind of showed enough over that one side uh, and gave it enough detail that it would uh, make it a little bit more interesting that way. Also on this one, I thought it looked quite nice just with the dark lines since I added that dark background in and it kind of cuts off where it's just all linesy around the outside. Uh, blends in quite nice, I guess it looks part of it. Uh, but I do go and change some of the line colours, so I'm just going and filling the eyes in, and I think that helps it look better as well. I tried to keep them quite pale like they were in the reference too, I didn't want to add any like, really dark shading on them, or dark pupils, I thought that would look very out of place. I was trying to keep it, um, as close to the refs as I could in terms of where colours were and things. Um, if people do anything like, I've seen characters where they have stars for pupils before, I always try and keep that as a thing that I do um, and carry over. This one I think I found the most difficult also because I wasn't quite sure where to go with the colours on this one because it's obviously very monochrome. And I think I tried to lean into the purple that is just on that little gem uh, and then keep the reds very bright. That's also kind of what's going on in the ref too and I thought that worked pretty well. Um, but I want to kind of soften it out a little bit more and give more room for the colours and the eyeballs to pop out as well. Um, but also keep that kind of creepy, like, pale look <laughs> so that she still looks spooky. Uh, I had a lot of trouble with the background on this one too, so I ended up going and putting in the colours that I had on the eyeballs because any of the colours that I already had in there were going to just blend in. Like, if I just leave it black, it's going to blend into her hair. If it's white, it's going to blend into her hand. If I make it red, it's going to blend into her kimono. So, I just want to put it down as all these different striped colours like that. J just to give it something to kind of latch onto. And then I go and change it a little bit later when I have uh, the textures in the background as uh, a different thing to try out. Which ended up looking quite a lot better, actually. I preferred it quite a lot like that. A uh, bit of shading on there, eyeballs and things, little eyeball dots and shine <laughs> on top of that too. And oh, it looks like I kind of drew them separately too, yeah. Keep the uh, sticks or the needles kind of separate from them. And then little bits of that gradient in the hair as well. Oh, looks like I, end I guess I ended up changing it to that. Yeah, so she's got just something different with a different gradient behind her too. She does have a very spooky face. I think I did alright on the spooky face. I tried to make her eyes a little bit... I guess kind of outweighs from where she actually would be focusing. It does still look like she's looking at it, but it's a little bit kind of more outweighs and... off. It's not quite right, so she looks a little bit more spooky. <laughs> uh, and then lastly, my dude here. Uh, I tried to kind of lean him into the yellow sort of colour because he's got quite a lot of that in his design anyway with his hair uh, and there's going to be the glow on the cigarette so I figured we can lean it into this nice. We can also lean into like the cream with the, I guess it'd be kind of like woolen what he's got on his uh, shirt there as well. So that's got a slight kind of yellow tint to it and then he's a little bit warmer in the skin tone as well. Um, I lean him a little bit more into, I guess he's like kind of blonde gingery kind of skin tone where it's quite pale. 
Um, so I want to make it a little bit more towards the red in that as well. And it kind of plays in with the warmer colours. Um, we've also got like the gold little buckles on his jacket as well. I do a lot of trying to condense stuff down with the colours as much as I can so that... I, th I think I usually like around four or five different colours. That wouldn't be counting the, the extra shading colours as well. Uh, but I like to keep it around there for character designs. I, th I think that looks pretty nice. So when I do stuff like this, I try and think, okay, do I have a colour already that would work in this other place? Um, from the colours that I definitely need. So for example, those little buckles on his jacket, I'm thinking, all right, what colour can I use in these? Should I use like a pale kind of um, greyish colour? Maybe like the one that it's already in that wool fur that's on him. And then I was like, no, you know what? To separate it out a bit, because it's right next to those, let's use those same colours that are in his hair and see how they look. So uh, they ended up with that kind of shine on them. Um, any of the whites in there are kind of like tinted a little bit yellow. Um, just going and softening out everything else on it too. Eyebrows, uh, since they're the same colour as his hair. And then they have a little bit more gradient in the back. A little bit of overlay on everyone, so that that kicks out a little bit. Uh, just, just a bit more variation in the skin tone. I tend to not like them being too flat. They, they look fine, but I, uh, I like messing about and seeing what I can do. Got a little bit of yellow on the purple one pink on the others and a little bit more purple and blue on her and then I think I actually went and added the textures afterwards but you can see them in here and the way they kind of overlap and have all those different colors in them from the gradients that I put in uh yeah it's for watching I hope this helped if it did give us a like share if you think it helps someone else and subscribe for new videos on Saturdays I also post these early on patreon as well as some tutorials that I will be keeping exclusive if you want to get a commission like this, there is my commission info down in the description, as well as where I stream, where you can get prints of things that I've already drawn too. Uh, yeah, it's have a watching. Bye bye.